Run up the tab like a track meet. Take out the gals, put the gals in the backseat. What's poppin' everybody? It's Kevin. Welcome back to my channel. Wasn't that sickening? Wasn't that everything? Wasn't that everything you ever wanted, ever imagined, ever needed? I am wearing a hat because I could not be bothered to do my hair this morning. But anyways, if you couldn't tell from the intro video, today what we're doing is a very smoky, cool tone 90s glam. If you remember from my first video that I posted a few weeks ago, we did a warm, kind of cool-ish 90s glam on my friend Julia. Today, I want to go the opposite and do a cool tone, smoky eye glam moment on dark skin. Today's model is... There's no words. Like, there's just no words. Like, she's one of the most beautiful women I have ever met in my entire life, and working with her was nothing but a joy. This video quickly became my favorite one that we filmed so far, so I'm super excited for you guys to see this one. We're gonna keep the skin velvety and matte, and then keep the eyes really structured and cool. In today's video, I'm also gonna be showing you how to get the perfect nude lip on dark skin. If you struggle getting makeup to look the way you want on dark skin, this is exactly the video you wanna be watching. If you haven't clicked that big red button yet, I highly suggest you do because we post every week over here and we're really fun, we're really fresh, we're really gay, so what, what more do you want? <laughs> if you've ever wanted to learn how to get the perfect supermodel glam on dark skin, keep on watching. You guessed it, let's start off with some skin prep. First, I'm gonna go in with my Rare Beauty setting spray just to moisten up the skin a little bit and then using the Dew of the Gods High Blend Glow Oil to add some extra hydration to the skin. This really isn't an oil, it's more of a serum, but it is gonna add a lot of beautiful hydration to the skin. Now to add some additional skincare benefits on the look that we're doing, I'm gonna use the Murad Environmental Shield Vitamin C Serum. This is just really gonna help benefit the skin while Peace has a full face of makeup on, which is always a lovely thing to do because you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. For some moisturizer, I'll use the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream Light. This might look nuts for a second, it looks really white and really pale on her skin, but the more you massage this in, the more it just vanishes and melts right into the skin. The texture of this is lovely, it does have SPF, and foundation just slides right over it like it's nothing. Oh, it's one of my favorites, it is expensive, but it is really, really good. For eye cream, as always, I'll be using my Ula Hendrickson Banana Bright Eye Cream just to add some extra hydration to the under eye and also add like a barrier between the skin and the concealer, which is really going to prevent things from creasing and looking dry and cakey. I always like to do a little quick face massage to my clients. It really helps wake them up and get some blood flow going and plump up that skin. Before I move on and add any foundation at all, I'm going to use my Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer in a really warm red shade to color correct around her mouth. Typically with dark skin tones, you can have some darkness around the mouth, chin, upper lip area, so doing this before foundation is really going to help hide it. Today for foundation, I'll be using the Fenty Beauty Hydrating Foundation. You guys have seen this one on my channel more than a few times already because it really is just that good. It works on so many different skin types, skin tones, skin textures. It really is an overall great product. Now I did say I'm doing a more matte, velvety look, but that does not mean that I have to go in with really oil reducing products and really mattifying products because that could be a huge reason as to why sometimes your makeup might look a little crusty or a little cakey throughout the day. When you kind of overcompensate for things like that, your skin can really freak out uh, and your makeup isn't going to look the way you want it to look. To cream contour slash cream bronze, I'm going to be using the same foundation in just a much darker tone. I love doing this trick because it just really helps everything melt together. Obviously, it's the same formula, so everything is just going to blend into each other like it's nothing. So what I'm doing first is I'm applying the product with a different brush, making the shape that I'm looking to create, starting the contour towards the upper end of the ear and working my way downwards towards the corner of the lip, around the brow bone, the hairline, and of course the jaw. Once I have all of that applied and created that shape that I'm looking for, I'm going to go in with that same foundation brush that I applied my foundation with and blend that out with the brush. Because that brush already has the same previous foundation tone on it, it's just going to fuse everything together. And because this is the same formula again, it's just going to blend all together in one seamless manner. Since we're doing a sultry, cool tone look, I definitely want to bring this contour into the brow bone and the nose. I'm not necessarily snatching up Peace's nose because if I snatch her nose anymore, it's basically going to break off because it's already so cute and so tiny already. And once I've created the shape that I'm looking for, I'm going to blend everything out with that same foundation brush. 
Now let's add some contrast and brightness. I'll be using the Too Faced Born This Way concealers. I'm very much a mixer. I love mixing my shades, my concealers, my foundations. That's why you guys don't really hear me talk about the specific shades that I'm using because I typically don't just use one shade. But anyways, I'm applying this in the center of the forehead, the upper lip, the chin, around the mouth, and the nose. You can see that I'm avoiding the under eye right now because I'm going to do that later on. The more I let that concealer sit on the under eye, the more it's going to have the tendency to crease. So let's just do that later. Now I'm going to start blending everything out. I'm going to start at the forehead and really diffusing everything outwards. I want to make sure I'm maintaining the shape that I created, but I'm diffusing out those lines, making sure there is no obvious harshness. You can see that I'm also leaving that nose line as the last thing to blend out. The reason I want to do that is because I'm trying to let that concealer dry down just a little bit. So when I do go in to blend it out, it holds its shape just a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna enhance her jaw and her eyes. So I'm gonna apply just a little bit of concealer right underneath her contour and right where her lash line starts. That's really gonna help as a guideline for the look that we're gonna do later on on the eyes. And I'm gonna blend everything out. You can see that I'm not blending it into the contour, but I'm definitely blending it around and shaping up that contour and creating that definition. With deeper skin, it can be a little bit harder to get those deeper tones to pop. It's almost like with fair skin, it's a little hard to get those really fair tones to pop. So you really have to play with the makeup in the opposite manner. With dark tones, you really wanna play with those light tones, and with fair tones, you really wanna play with those dark tones. So try that out. It can really help shape everything up and really add that contrast that you feel like you might be missing in your complexion. And once I'm happy with the blend, I'm going to go on the nose and blend everything out. And you can see how much more it's holding that structure and adding a lot more contrast to the nose. Next, I'm going to use the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Cream Blushes in the shades Summertime Wine and Strawberry Drip. I'm mixing both because I really wanted the depth of Summertime Wine and the coraliness of Strawberry Drip. So I just mixed both. I'm applying the product with a brush starting at the hairline on the cheekbone and then bringing it down to the apple of the cheek really being very concentrated with this because I want the blush to look very saturated. And once I'm happy with what I've applied with my brush, I'm going to go over everything with that beauty blender and really melt everything together and make it look like it's all one face. Ah, oh, look at that skin, honey. Untouchable. Now we can finally move on to the under eye. With that same concealer, I'm gonna start to apply the concealer on the under eye, really concentrating it right on the under eye and slowly starting to blend everything out with my brush. This might look like I'm applying a lot of product, but I'm really not. What I'm doing here is I'm applying a little bit of product and blending it out with the brush, creating that little shape that I wanna have before I go in with my beauty blender. I'm bringing the product all the way up to the lash line and just extending out her inner corner just a little bit and also bringing in her nose bridge just a bit. I'm going to add some brightness on her brow bone, which is really going to help with eyeshadow later on. Once I'm happy with the way I've applied everything, I can finally go in and blend everything with a beauty blender. The way I like to blend my under eye is I like to start on that outer line of demarcation and really get a nice ombre between light and dark. And once I'm happy with that gradation, I'm going to go into the direct under eye and really start to blend things out, focusing it in that under eye area. I do not want to bring this too far down because then you're just going to lose all your shape. And all the hard work that you just did is going to go to shit. Once I'm happy with the blend, I'm going to go in one final last time to make sure there's no creases and set the under eye with the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Setting Powder in the shade Honey and really just lock in that under eye. I'll be honest with you, I've never really used this powder other than on myself when it first came out. And to be honest, I didn't like it on my under eye, but oh my God, it was so good. Oh my God, it was so good. Like her under eye looked beautiful. The tone was perfect. It was that perfect warmth and that perfect golden undertone without making her look yellow. And you know what I'm talking about. Um, it was perfect. Same thing on the other eye, I'm blending out that outer line of demarcation, making sure everything is blended together. You can still see that there's a very distinct difference between the color underneath the eye and the blush and the contour. Everything is very separated, but it doesn't look out of place. Everything is very melted together. So what I mean by that is you want things to look like they're there. You don't want to blend things out because like I said, that's just a waste of work, but you do not want things to look like they're out of place because then your makeup just looks messy. Once I have the under eye set with whatever powder I have left on that puff, I'm going to very lightly press it on the rest of the face and just set very, very lightly. Now with that same Fenty Beauty powder, but in the shade Coffee, which is a much darker shade, uh, it's darker than Piece of Skin Tone, I'm going to use this to set those bronzer areas. Not only is this going to help things look a lot more smoother when we actually bronze, but it's going to add almost like a pre-bronze and really allow the bronzer to melt into the face a lot smoother. You can see how already this added a lot of definition to her face, and it's not even bronzer. 
it's just setting powder. Before I move on, I'm gonna add a very thin line of the honey powder right down the center of the nose to add some extra structure and let that sit for a while. For bronzer, I'll be using the Benefit Hula Bronzer in the shade Toasted. This is Benefit's darkest bronzer, um, and if you know anything about Benefit, they aren't really known for having the greatest range for darker skin tones, but I'll be honest, this did surprise me. It did do the job quite well. It was just a little bit too light, so if you're darker than Peace, it won't work for you, unfortunately. Um, so yeah. To add some extra color to those cheeks, I'm going to use Laura Mercier blush in the shade Peach and really concentrating it right on the apple of Peace's cheeks. Bitch, I don't have to say anything. Look at her facial structure. This face is meant for blush, so I'm really going in on it on the cheeks, on the temples, on the brow bone, on the nose, on the chin. I'm blushing her the hell up. Once I'm happy with the blush, I'm going to move on and start to use some translucent powder to really shape up her face. I'm going to snatch up her nose, I'm going to snatch up her contour, and really structurize everything and make everything look a lot more clean and neat. Now let's move on to the eyes. For primer, I'm going to use that same Too Faced concealer and add a very thin layer on the lid, buffing that out with a brush. And then with a little bit of that translucent powder, I'm going to bake right on her outer corner. This is going to create that line, but also help with any fallout that might happen later on. For shadow, I'm going to be using the Fenty Beauty Snap Shadows 1 and 6. I'm going to jump back and forth between the two. Taking those two dark brown shades in the number one palette, I'm really just going to buff it across the lid, concentrating it on the outer corner of the eye and also towards the brow bone where the beginning of the brow is and the nose contour meets. Now I'm going to take that same dark brown shade from the number one palette and really concentrate it on the lash line. This is going to act as a base for the wing that we're going to create later on. And just like a regular cat eye, you still want this to start out very thin and then work its way out much thicker. And then once I'm happy for the base that we created for the wing that we're going to do later on, I'm going to wrap that dark brown shade all the way back into the inner corner of the eye, really creating that sultry, sexy feel. Now this is where it gets fun. Next, I'm going to use the Marc Jacobs Black Gel Pencil and really concentrate that on the lash line. I'm being pretty clean with it because these have a lot of color pigment. Once they blend out, they're going to blend out. They're very soft, very smooth, and you have a lot of time to play with them. Um, they're one of my favorite pencils on the market. So you can see here that I blended out that line very fast, very seamlessly. It gave me no trouble. And now once I have that lash line, I'm going to start to build my wing. So here you can see that I'm building the base of the wing with the pencil and blending it out with a brush. This is going to be like a back and forth process of going between the pencil and blending it out. More pencil, blending it out. And you want to build as much depth as you're looking for. This is going to replicate the look of an actual wing without having to commit to a full wing. This is going to be a lot faster, a lot more fun, and a lot more sexy because it's so smoked out. Now with a little tiny blending brush, I'm going to take a bit of that liner and start to buff it through the crease of her eye, really concentrating it right where that brow starts. This is going to really make everything look like it's straight out of the 90s first of all, but also make things look a lot more sexy, more sultry, and a lot more cohesive too. Same thing on the other eye, I'm going to start to create that base on the lash line with the pencil and then once I'm happy with that, I'm going to move on and blend it out with a pencil brush. You can see how easy these blend out. There are so many pencils on the market that when you try to do this, it does not let you do it. So you really got to be sure you're using the right formula and the right product for what you're actually trying to achieve. Don't get too stressed about making the bottom line too sharp and perfect. Try to blend above the line, not below, but if you do get a little bit messy, don't worry because we're going to go in with a concealer anyways and clean that up later on. Oh, and by the way, with these liners, once they set, they set. They do not move. They will last all day. They will not transfer. You might have this liner stuck in your eye for a day or two if you don't wash it off correctly, so I'm just letting you know. Now with a little bit of that same concealer, I'm not necessarily cutting the crease, but I'm using that concealer to add a little bit of brightness onto the lid and shape things up just a little bit. I'm not adding a lot, by the way, just a very little bit. And then setting that with that same translucent powder that we used on the under eye. What this is really doing, it's bringing that under eye into the lid, basically. Those same tones that we used on the under eye are going to now be on the lid, making things look a lot more cohesive and make it look like you're naturally sculpted by the gods. 
which Peace very much is, by the way. <laughs> now with the black shade in the number six palette and a very flat brush, I'm gonna start to add some definition to the base of the liner. This is just gonna make things look a little bit cleaner. Um, if you got a little bit messy, this is just gonna make things look like you tried just a little harder. <laughs> With that same liner, I'm gonna run it through her inner lash line. Um, some girls don't like doing this, some people can't live without it. Ask your client first, because sometimes they might be uncomfortable with it, but Peace was a G and she loved it. And we're really gonna blend out and smoke out that bottom lash line. Um, if you know anything about my makeup style, I don't like my bottom lash lines to be too blown out, like not like crazy blown out, but I definitely want it to look um, like there's something there. Once we have the bottom lash line done, I can finally go ahead and blend all that powder that's been sitting there because we don't need it anymore. And you can see how her skin just looks untouchable. Untouchable. Oh my god. For brows, I'm going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Perfect Brow Pencil in the shade Granite. We're trying to do a 90s look here, so things are going to be thin and light. Uh, obviously, modernize it just a little bit, but I'm going to concentrate most of the product on the outer tail of the brow, uh, really creating that shape that I'm looking for, and then keeping it really light at the inner portion of the brow, almost making it look like the brow is coming from the nose contour or the inner part of the eyeshadow. Although her brows are a bit more on the lighter side, her shape is magnificent and it suits her face perfectly. So I really didn't have to do much reshaping with her brows. Uh, with some clients, you might have to do that a little bit where you reshape their brows uh, to make things look a little bit more cohesive. Before I move on to any lashes or mascara, I'm going to add a very thin line with the House Laboratories Black Liquid Liner. Very thin. I also added an inner corner wing off camera. Then I'm going to take that same Marc Jacobs pencil and tight line her upper lash line. This is going to close everything off and basically finalize the look before we do lashes. It's basically going to get rid of any skin tone that's peeping through. For mascara, I'll be using the Fenty Beauty Full Frontal Mascara. Really like this one because it's super lengthening and very thickening. Um, it's not fully like black black, it's almost gray black, which I don't mind, but I would appreciate if it was like black black. And then for lashes, I'll be using the Velour Lashes in the style Can't Be Tamed. These ones are very wispy, um, very spiky, and really like went so great with the look. I do plan on doing a video on how I customize my lashes and apply my lashes and make sure everything is comfortable, so stay tuned for that one. And then once the lashes are applied, a quick coat of bottom mascara. Now I'm going to show you the perfect nude lip for dark skin. First, I'm going to take the MAC Cosmetics Costa Rich Eyeliner. Yes, I said eyeliner. You heard that correct. The reason I'm using eyeliner is because eyeliners are formulated to last a lot longer on the face. They're formulated to last within the eye that moves. It's always wet. Um, so it's just going to last a lot longer on the lip. I'm not necessarily overlining, maybe just like a little bit. I'm going right up to her vermilion border, which is basically where her lip skin meets her upper lip. You can see it's that very sharp, distinct difference. And then once I've lined her lips, I'm going to use the Dose of Colors liquid lipsticks in the shade Cork and Sand. So first I'm using Cork and buffing that into the lip liner with a brush and getting that perfect diffused lip. Already you can see that this is the perfect shade for her. It matches her skin tone perfectly. It's basically already the perfect nude lip, but I want to take it just a step there. Once I have cork applied, I'm going to take a little bit of that sand and apply it right in the center of the lip with my brush, and then taking my finger, I'm going to pat it out and get that perfect ombre lip. Now this might look crazy, it's really light, but just wait, hear me out. And now I'm going to take the Artist Couture Plush Pout Gloss in the shade X-Rated. This is the perfect nude lip for dark skin. It's going to melt everything together and make it look as one. The tone of this gloss is impeccable, and Mr. Angel Marino, Mr. Mac Daddy, you killed it with this one. Uh, it's the perfect gloss. It really is. It makes everything look so nice and so unified and just, ah, uh, it's so good. You need it. You really need it. And then one last quick spray of setting spray. And in case you need one more reminder of how beautiful Peace is, here you go. And that's how you serve a 90s glam fantasy on dark skin. I don't have to say much about the model. I'm pretty sure you guys can see how 
perfect she looks um, with and without makeup as well. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this quickly became my favorite look I think I have ever created because everything just worked. And if you're a makeup artist, when things just work, it's the best feeling ever. That nude lip, that stack of products, girl, it became one of my favorite lips I have ever created because like I said, it just worked. If you guys missed any of the products that I used in the video, everything is gonna be listed down below so it's super easy for you to find and easy for you to shop. If you wanna see more of me or more of my work, you can follow me over on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Everything is at Kevy Kojo, so it's super easy for you to find. And if you wanna see more of me over here, I post every week on this channel, period. But that is it for this week's video. Till the next one, I'll see you guys then. Bye everyone.